and welcome to episode number 31 of the Golf Front Podcast. My name is Brett Bevilacqua. I'm a realtor with Carolina Property Sales in Southern Pines, North Carolina. Every Monday, I release a new episode profiling one of the over 60 fantastic golf courses located in the Sand Hills of North Carolina. This is the place to live if you live to play golf. This week, we hit up Pinehurst number three, what I would call the most fun course on the property and possibly in the Sand Hills. Located on resort property next to Pinehurst number five and across the street from the clubhouse lies another Donald Ross masterpiece. I ignored Pinehurst number three for years solely based on the length and the fact that no one in my inner circle ever spoke about it. What a disservice I did to myself. My first round on number three was a treat, a challenge, and an absolute joy. After the first few holes, I thought I had made a mistake, but then the course got better with every hole and then with every shot. I recently heard someone call Pinehurst number three the mini number two, and I get it. The greens are a physics experiment with funhouse elements that not only challenge those with a great short game, it will torment them. Pinehurst number three opened in 1910, and as with number two, which opened in 1907, it is hard to believe that Ross had only built a handful of courses prior to these two magnificent golf courses. The par 68 Pinehurst number three, thanks to six par threes and just two par fives, placed 5,155 yards from the white tees, which on this course is as far back as you can go, but don't let that fool you. Most players still aren't breaking 80, thanks to the tiny and elevated greens. Number three has a rating of 66.1 and a slope of 123, but it plays a whole lot tougher. As I said, the first hole had me a little nervous. That is when I noticed there were no gold or blue tees. And the yardage from the whites was just a tick over 280 yards. I thought this may not be the course for me. I hit a poor drive and landed on the right side of the fairway smack dab between two right side waste areas. I chipped up onto the green and then promptly three putt for bogey. The green wasn't just tough, it was about as technical as I have ever seen. My first putt went right to left and then back to right. The second hole is a very short, just 120 yard par three. There is a waste area up front and bunkers to the left of the small green. It is unnerving if the course is busy as the third tee is directly behind the second green. So often on this course, I found myself thinking, don't skull it or you will kill somebody. One thing that I must mention, this course is classic Ross. Every green is close to the next tee box. The third is the longest par four on the front side and add that to the pretty severe dog leg right where you play uphill to the turn and then downhill to the green. There is a large bunker on the corner and two more to the right of the green. If you clear the fairway bunker, you will leave yourself about 150 yards all downhill to the pin. But here's where it gets tricky. If you are short, you will roll off the front of the green. If you are long, you will roll off the back, and doing either will add a number of strokes to your scorecard. I am not talking about missing on the edges and rolling off, I'm talking about missing the very center of the green and then rolling off. I tripled this hole and there was nothing I could do about it. The fourth will give you a bit of a reprieve. This medium length par three has you hitting over a pond, which shouldn't be a factor at all. The green is surrounded by bunkers, but it is very fair and dare I say, easy. If you don't pick up a par here, you could be in for a long day. The fifth is a very interesting hole. This par five is almost drivable, but you will need a perfectly placed tee shot. First thing you wanna do is make sure you aren't hitting into the group in front of you. Then put your tee shot down the left side of the fairway aim to the left of the tall pines. As you clear the ridge, you will gain distance downhill as your shot trickles to the center or right side of the fairway. I missed my drive and still ended up in the right side bunker. The green is similar to the fourth, mostly easy, and with a well-placed drive, can be an easy par. The sixth is the longest par three on the front side. At just 160 from the white tees, you will need to put it close to the pin and avoid the waste area or the bunker. The green is two-tiered and one of the tougher, more memorable greens on the course. I played it safe and avoided the sand by aiming right and just missing the green. That still left me with a double on my scorecard. If you don't put it close to the pin on six, you will need a miracle putt to pick up a par. 
The par 4 7th is a short dog leg left. It looks much longer from the tee box, but you will want to grab a 5 wood or iron off the tee. It is just too easy to find the backyards of some really nice golf front property. The green is anything but easy, and there is a large bunker that runs along the entire left side. It is easy to roll off the green if you run the back center or back right. The eighth is a work of art. This small, thin, and elevated green falls off to the left and to the right, making this 110-yard par 3 so much more of a challenge than I thought possible from the tee box. There is a waste area to the left of the green. Behind that and the green is a large pond. This is not an easy hole if you don't put your tee shot somewhere in the center of the green. The par 4 ninth was quite possibly my favorite hole on the course. You will need to keep your tee shot to the left to avoid the waste area that juts out into the fairway. Too far left, and you could be playing out of the left rough, which is more waste area. The green is elevated and easy to go over, as I would find out. You do not return to the clubhouse after the ninth hole. The tenth is a short but interesting par 4 that turns slightly to the left. There is a small waste area on the left side of the fairway that needs to be avoided. The fairway runs slightly uphill, the green is elevated, and it may take a club more to get to the green on your approach. This green isn't especially tough. The 11th is the first of two par 5s on the course, and it plays a whole heck of a lot longer than the scorecard indicates. The 11th turns hard to the right, but the fairway is very roomy, so feel free to let it rip. Off the tee, aim just to the left of the waste area. With your second shot, you want to aim just to the right of the chimney on the White House with the helicopter on it. After the 150-yard marker, the fairway slopes downhill so you get a lot of run. But it seems like only the longest of players will be able to get to the green in two. If the pin is in the back, the green is treacherous. There are also a pair of bunkers behind the green that you don't want to mess with. The 12th is a long uphill par 3 that should take a club more to reach the green. The green has a brutal false front. It plays about 195 from the whites and it feels like significantly more. 13 is the other par 5, and it is short. Shorter still thanks to an extremely elevated tee box. Off the tee, play it straight away. A good drive will leave you about 180 to 200 from the green. Try to avoid the left side of the green as you most likely won't stick to it. 14 is another long par 3. There is a bunker to the front right of the green and waste area down both the right and left side. 15 is a short but very tough par 4. Avoid the waste area that spills into the fairway on the right, but make sure you don't go too far left or trees will block your approach to the green. There are no bunkers surrounding the green, but it may be one of the toughest greens on the course, and it is much too easy to go off the back of this green. 16 is another short par 4 played off an elevated tee box. This hole is riddled with deep bunkers that are all trouble, especially the one in front of the green on the right. The false front on the 16th is brutal, and it is also easy to go off the right side or the back. You know you are playing really well if you put together back-to-back -to -back pars on 15 and 16, and I doubt there have been too many back-to-back -to -back birdies. The short par 4 17th just requires a well-placed drive which should set you up for a par. Off the tee, you will need to favor the left side. The fairway runs downhill and your drive will funnel from left to right. There is a very large bunker off to the right, and if the pin is on the left side of the green, you will have some serious work to do. The 18th is the longest par 4 on the course and is mostly uphill. It is straight away and all you need to do is to be long. It is probably a half to a full club more for most players on the approach. The green isn't as challenging as most of the greens, but I missed an easy 3 foot putt that I would love to have back. Piner's number three was so much fun. Even though I posted a pair of triples and a pair of doubles, I loved every moment of my time on the course. I never got mad, which is rare for me. Number three didn't give me the same feeling as number two, but it was similar. There is just something about a Donald Ross design that works for me, and I know I am not alone. Once again, don't forget to get to the course early and take advantage of the practice facility. Green's fees range from 100 to 130, depending on time of year, making it among the most affordable of the Pinehurst courses. If you're planning to move here, I can walk you through all the steps to become a member, and it is one of the best bargains in the country. For more information about golf, vacation packages, or memberships, check out their website at pinehurst.com or call them at 844-330-1669.
As for golf front property, Piners number three has to be in the running for some of the prettiest golf front homes in the village. There are condos, just not as many as there are on Pinehurst number five. If you are looking in Pinehurst or anywhere else in the Sandhills, give me a call or text at 845-365-3665 or send an email to brett at hmpfilms.com and I will show you all the area has to offer. Once again, I'm Brett Bevilacqua with Carolina Property Sales. Next week, we go back to where it all began, Pinehurst number one. I hope you join me.